ladies and gentlemen. How you doing this morning? Good morning. All right, my name is um, Brian Best. I am a native of Edgefield, South Carolina. I currently reside in Greenwood now where I manage the Sherwin-Williams paint store. So if you need paint, please come by there, but <laughs> please come by. I, I will give you a good deal. All right. The question is, who is Brian Best? Brian Best is an ordinary man with an extraordinary vision. Brian Best is a man that's, I'm from Edgefield County, small town. I am a husband, I am a father, and I'm a person that cares about my community. 1994, it's been 30 years since a Democratic candidate won this seat. In 94, I believe I was in third, fourth grade, <laughs> long time ago. But it's been 30 years since a candidate been in, in this seat that's had integrity. 30 years since it's been a candidate that had a trusted voice within the community. When I go out and speak in the community, do you know what I hear? When I ask questions about, have you seen your congressman? Do you know who your congressman is? No one knows. No one knows who our congressman is because he doesn't, he doesn't come by and check on the community. Trusted voices is what we need. We need a candidate that's gonna, you know you can trust, that has integrity, that's gonna do right by people. I grew up in the 15%, not having much, but taking advantage of the opportunities that came forth my way. I grew up with my parents sitting down making decisions on whether to feed us or pay the light bill. I grew up with not having much at all, but I always had my head, up, held my head up high and I always had pride in myself. My parents taught me integrity my parents taught me how to stand on my word and be accountable. This week, I was at a forum in Anderson, and I was with my other counterparts, the Republican side, and it's unreal the way they think. They don't think about nobody but the hierarchy. People are hurting. People are struggling. People need help. But we look, they look up beyond that. I had a guy there spoke, spoke about gun control. No, no uh, spoke about border control. And, this, and it, was so, it was so much of a racist rhetoric that it disgusted me. No one person is better than the next man or the next woman. Congress right now, one of the big problems is we have people in their boat, even there on the Republican side, that's fighting against one another and building up a wall. We have to tear that wall down and build bridges so we can connect with people. Someone asked me, what are my big issues that I, that I really focus on? I'm focused on education because I know what education done for me, and I know what education can do for this district. What education does is when a big corporation wanna come in and bring in companies within our district, what they look at it is the education level, the crime rate. When you have low education, crime is high. So who wants to invest millions of dollars into a district when they know they got low education and high crime rate. It makes them, the business owner think, why would I invest millions of dollars? Because are they competent enough to be able to produce my products? So what education does, it brings a positive chain reaction to our district. 
and then it brings in jobs, infrastructure, housing, affordable housing, because if people can have affordable jobs, affordable living, paying jobs that pay good wages, that it makes them want to buy homes. It builds the local economy up. It brings business into the economy. It gets young college students from Lander, Erskine, Clemson, Anderson University to stay within our communities. We don't want to have a district where we have young adults who want to build families and thrive as to go to different areas to be able to live. We want to keep that here. That helps fuel the economy. We need to work on also expanding Medicare. We have a lot of seniors that are not getting the proper Medicare and not affordable. Social Security. We have a lot of seniors that are living off maybe six, seven hundred bucks a month. No one can live that way. The way the inflation is right now and the way prices are going up. But I have a personal opinion on inflations. That's why I believe in government stepping in with these big companies. Because a lot of this inflation going on is big companies that price gouging and taking advantage of the smaller consumer. So we need regulations with that. I believe in gun safety. I believe we have the right to defend ourselves and be able to own guns, but no one needs an AR-15 that can shoot 100 people at one time. That's near and dear to my heart because I lost my brother to a gun violence. A guy murdered my brother. He had got a gun that Monday and murdered my brother that Thursday. What if they had a regulation where they got to wait 30 days before he received a gun or get a mental test? That could have saved my brother's life. So being a product of gun violence and see how it tore my family up, I'm an advocate of gun safety. I'm an advocate of if a person gets a gun, they should get a sheet with it they have to sign so they can be able to go to gun safety classes. Get a license certificate with a sticker on it. Every two years, take a course. Because laws change. And if they don't have that sticker renewed, take their gun away or give them a big fine. We have to hold people accountable. Accountability is one of the biggest things that our Congress is missing right now. But I blame us. I blame the people. Because we have the power. But we're sitting back and letting them abuse us. So our votes matter. Hold me accountable. If I'm not doing what I said I'm going to do, I want you to tell me, Mr. Best, you're not doing this. Mr. Best, you're not doing that. Because I'm a man, and I was raised to be accountable. When I get elected, I have a game plan of every quarter meeting with my county chairs so we can have open town halls, open transparent dialogue because it's your voices that need to be heard in Congress, not my voice. But how can I know these things if you're not communicating with me and I'm not listening to you? So being a good listener is what I pledge to be. You have to listen to your constituents to know what's going on in the communities. It's y'all communities that y'all live in every day. Y'all see the problems that are going on in our communities. One of the main things I've seen since I've been traveling is the roads are terrible. Oh, God. <laughs> but we need to be able to get with our county councils and our county commissioners so we can be able to solve these problems. We can do it. But we have to get together 
and bring change. I think it's insanity if you're sitting back and watching the same thing go over and over again, revert, and there's no change. That's why they're doing what they're doing, because they know that the voters are not holding them accountable. Jeff Duncan been in about 10 years and had done nothing because no one charged and held him accountable for his actions. So why vote for me? I'm a candidate that's committed, compassionate, and intentional. I say CCI. And it's funny I say that because my son was the one who, brought, who, who gave it to me. Six years old and has a passion and cares about people. I'm proud of that. I'm proud to see that my son cares about people. I care about people. I care about this district. June 11th, I want everyone to come out there and vote. Go to your communities. If you see someone in your community that not registered or hasn't voted in a while, tell them about me. You go on my web page, email me, and I'll get back to you. I want to thank you for this morning, for having me here speak. Thank you for your support, and God bless. Thank you so much, Brian. Do you have a couple minutes to address some questions? Yes, sir. All right, we have one right here already. Mr. Bess, <clears throat> Mr. Bess, how do you, how do you see a road to success being that you're running in a congressional district that's the most Republican percentage-wise of any district in South Carolina. What is your strategy to be successful? My strategy is the grassroots approach. And then when, I'm, when I become the nominee, I plan on setting up, set up town halls within each one of my districts with both sides coming in to hear me speak. Because a lot of times when you talk, I talk to Republicans, they don't know the issues. They're not informed. So creating a transparent dialogue and they can see what I stand on, that's what I believe that, that's gonna help me win. All right, thank you. Next question. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there, my name is May Kong. Thank you so much for coming to talk to us. And yes, thank you most importantly for running. Yes ma'am. So you mentioned education. Yes, education is near and dear to my heart. It's something that I believe wholeheartedly in. Um, and so I wanted to ask, what are some of the educational issues that you would tackle and what are some of the um, solutions that you would propose? Okay. So, I don't know if you know this, but South Carolina is rated number one in the nation with expelling pre-K and, uh, and kindergartens. <laughs> so, it starts from, it starts from the, the kids but we have to be able to get volunteer work from the parents as well. Because we can't send our kids to school having the teachers to raise our kids. So we need to get with our community leaders, pastors, councilmen, and get families involved together so we can be able to work on, start from the ground up, teaching our kids right from wrong, pushing the education. And that's part that helps. Second of all, we need to also pay our teachers. <laughs> Recruit, <laughs> recruit talented individuals in the teaching force. Because what's going on vaguely is, is you got a, a teacher in, in the classroom with 30, 40 students not able to reach every student. So we got to short, shorten the classrooms up so that we can be able to have teachers to be able to focus on the students and also training. Because a lot of kids now are being diagnosed with ADHD. And a lot of these young teachers that they're coming in, they don't, they have a hard time dealing with students with ADHD. So we need to also work on teacher training as well to be able to deal with students with ADHD and also to deal with students with learning disabilities as well. So it starts from, first off, the parents and the community stepping in, helping our young, our young children, as well as the teachers all working together, building a bridge to be able to 
help with education. Brian, I have a question. Uh, yes, I understand that you're going to be involved next week in a debate with your uh, opponent for SC3, is that correct? Yes, sir. Can you give the details on that in case anybody from here would like to go? Um, it will be in McCormick, I believe, on the 7th, I believe, at 6 p.m. We, Me and Ms. Um, Gardner is going to be debating on issues. Uh, I met her one time, I believe, one time. I met her one time. It seemed like, and uh, we're going to go against what she believes in, what I believe in, and hopefully my message get out there and you can see if you, you've invited to come. I can take it to the address. I forgot the address. I think it's the, the MIM Center. Is that correct? Yeah, MIM Center. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's, that's within driving distance. Brandon? Good morning. Thank Good morning. you very much for running and Thank you. Get, getting involved. Um, I, can you explain a little bit? I, I, um, I think the research and um, data supports that um, although people are complaining about inflation, a big driver of that is record-breaking profits for companies. And you mentioned that the government should get involved in that. Can you talk a little bit more about how you would propose that involvement. Okay. It's kind of like, if you remember back in 2009, we had the, um, the market crash, and we had um, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, the auto industry, and how they, how they went down and crashed. And then what happened was brought past bills, which gave them stimulus package to be able to help help their uh, businesses so when it comes to the inflation we have a um when COVID 19 hit we had a lot of supply and demand and so when the supply and demand factor hit hit up the, there was a lot of things that couldn't come into the um country because we had to get made, scanned and checked through for the companies in the country so now we have big companies now taking advantage of that and price gouging local consumers. So we're feeling the effect of my company, with Sherwin Williams, which is a billion dollar company, but we're feeling the effect of pricing with paint products and the pricing of um, ships, things getting shipped in. So what I'm going to propose the legislation is government, we go over these, com these big companies and seeing how they um, put regulation on them on what they should be charging and, and, and taking advantage of, of local consumers and also creating more market so that if I go to your establishment and your bread is $10, then there's no establishment I can go to where their bread can be $5. So if they see more competition is lowering the prices, what they're going to do? They're going to lower their prices to make it even. So I'm going to propose a legislation to look at companies, major companies that are price gouging and open up the market to make sure we have competitive, competitive companies that's competitive with them they're selling the same brand, but affordable for local consumers. Okay. Um, I do want to do one thing. Thank you, Mr. Bess, for, yes, for just pouring out and giving us the information that we need. But I want to make sure that it's clear where he will be for this particular uh, roundtable or candidate debate that's coming up. So it is going to be May 7th at 6 p.m. at the MIMS Community Center, and that's in Willington, South Carolina. One of the things that I think is important, and I've noticed that the parties are doing really well, is making sure that each voter has an opportunity to hear from all candidates. So you see that happening from Greenwood Democratic Party, McCormick is hosting the candidates as well, and that's exactly what Black, White, and Blue in the South has been attempting to do the podcast. So understand that we're trying to give the opportunity for everyone who's been brave enough to put their name on that ballot to have their voice heard. So when you have an opportunity, attend these meet and greets, attend these candidate forums and these debates. So when you walk into that booth to vote, you, you got one part of the battle done. I posted this morning, knowing the candidates is half the battle. Going in voting is the other part of the battle, right? Yeah. So know your candidates. So when you're out and you're talking to people, you know exactly where they stand and each of the parties are trying to give the opportunities for you to be well-versed. Thank you again. You're welcome.